Hey everybody, I'm Bill Calkins with Ball Tech On Demand, and we're back with another installment of In The Break Room, our series of short educational sessions intended to help you get prepared to grow your best crops ever. Today's topic has been requested a few times following the video mini series we released covering the ins and outs of first year flowering perennials grown from seed, plugs, cuttings, rooted liners, fertilized plants, but all programmed to hit key ship dates in an effort to capitalize on and expand the booming interest in perennials at retail. One of my absolute favorite guest experts, Chris Fifo from Darwin Perennials and Keep Seed, is back to dive a little bit deeper into a new tool he helped create to assist you in timing your first year flowering perennials correctly. This new tool from Darwin has been met with rave reviews due to its simplicity and usability, but I wanted Chris to run through a quick tutorial to help you use the tool to its greatest benefit. I should remind you that Chris is currently a product technical manager with Darwin, but spent more than a few years as a top-notch perennial grower and is truly one of today's gurus in the field. But that's enough out of me. Let's get to the topic at hand. Chris, why don't you go ahead and share your screen and take the viewers through the new tool from Darwin, and I'll be back at the end to wrap it up and share some additional resources. Will do. Yeah, thank you, Bill. And, you know, you hit it right on the nose there, the simplicity of this. That is really what is making this a huge hit. Our goal is to make it easier for growers to get perennials into flower. And so old school method of perennial growing was they're just going to kind of flower whenever they want to, and we're just going to let them go. But these days with the genetics that we've got and the top notch tools and uh, scheduling trials that we have going on, we can schedule these perennials to flower when you want them to flower. And our focus on the breeding side for both Darwin and Keith has been that first year flowering aspect. And so that has made this even easier to use. And our goal again is to make things simpler for perennial growers, but also for annual growers. More and more annual growers that I've been hearing have been asked by their suppliers, by their customers to grow some perennials. And so this is a great resource to start with if you don't know what's going on, how do we grow these, what do I choose, here is our great tool to use to get you to have success with your perennials. And so here we are, all we gotta do is go to Google and we have firstyearflowerytool.com. We can go here, it brings us to our website, and here we are. Very simple to use. We have a little booking calendar on here also for those who are not sure when should I be buying my inputs for perennials either. It gives you kind of a broad idea of when to buy your cuttings or when to be buying in your liners. Uh, it is uh, important, I think, for me to point out that this scheduling tool was a culmination of all of our scheduling trials that have gone on in West Grove, Pennsylvania. And so this is zone 6B. And so understand that when you're looking at the scheduling data here, because you're gonna have to extrapolate a little bit for your region. If you're further south in the springtime, you'll probably be finishing one to two weeks earlier than the scheduling tool is gonna be showing you. If you're further north in colder zones, you can probably expect one to two weeks slower in the springtime. But again, that's gonna be very temperature dependent, so depending upon your region. For summertime scheduling, I would say this is probably spot on for most regions of the United States. So here we go. We can just click to begin our scheduling. And it's gonna bring us to our list of Darwin proprietary genetics here. Scroll down, we can see our hardiness zone here. We can see, is this a suitable crop for finishing for spring, summer, or fall? And then a couple items we have on here, we note that they're long date obligates. And so those crops, if we're trying to finish those in the springtime, we would have to add that night interruption or day extension lighting. So you see here, I'm just gonna go see number one crop Easiest crop to schedule. This is number one that any annual grower, in my opinion, should be growing would be Coreopsis uptick. And so we'll click on our uptick here. It's going to bring us to the uptick page, gives us our variety selections here as well. What I love about this part, we put a lot of work into this. 
we scroll down to the bottom of the page, we've got propagation guidelines. And so your key points, if you're starting these from unrooted cuttings, and then further down, we've got our finishing guide as well. It's gonna give you general recommendations as far as lighting, temperature, does it require vernalization? Again, this is focused on first year flowering, so no there. And then here, you know, key points, you know, are they gonna need PGRs? You know, what pests should I look out for? Things like that. And another thing to point out with this tool, it's based upon one plant in a 2.5 quart container. So if we're going in larger containers, say we want to go 1.5 or two gallons, we're obviously going to be using probably three plants per on most of these items. And generally, I would say you probably add two more weeks to your scheduling as well. But here, let's go ahead and schedule our Coreopsis subtext. So big time of year, Mother's Day. We want these in flower for Mother's Day. So that's week 19, 2022. I put in 19, I hit enter. And it's that easy. It tells me what week to stick my cuttings if I'm starting from URCs, what week that liner is going to be ready to transplant, and then what week to transplant that into my 2.5 quart. It really is that simple. Now, again, understand the scheduling is going to be based loosely upon, I would say, a 65 degree average daily temperature. So if we're transplanting a liner into a 2.5, and we're throwing it in a cold frame, that's old school perennial growing. We're essentially growing these right alongside of our annuals. That's what makes it so easy. We don't need special environments. We don't need special media, special fertilizer, or anything. We can grow these warm, generally, along with our annuals. It's when they reach that finishing stage that we can kind of think of them as perennials and we can cool them off and hold them if our market is a little bit later than we expect it to be. And so there's our springtime scheduling. I wanna do a fall program too. I've seen fall programs really taking off. Some of these annual growers I've spoken to say, well, I don't have room for another program in the springtime. I am full, but midsummer into fall, I've got space here. I can make a usable crop out of this space and uh, extend my season. So I love week 36, we're gonna go for Labor Day for finish there. And it's gonna tell me liner transplant week 30. Wow, I can finish a Coreopsis uptake from a 72 liner. Again, this is based upon a 72. From a 72 and a 2.5 quart, I can finish it in six weeks, have it in full flower. That's amazing. And the thing about a lot of our prints also, they bloom for an extended period of time. And so again, old school was, you know, these prints are gonna be in bloom for just this basic period of time, not anymore. We've extended that and it makes it even easier to schedule perennials. And so now I have my spring, my fall scheduled for Coreopsis Subtick. I wanna save this to my schedule, click right there. And then I'm going to return to my crop list. And we'll see on here, we've got that little orange S on there. That is showing me that this crop is now scheduled. Another super popular, probably my favorite perennial is going to be Echinacea. And so Echinacea sombrero, we see here it's long date obligate. We can go into here and in our culture guidelines, we're going to see here. These are propagated from tissue culture. So this is going to be a little more specialty propagation. Most people are going to be doing these from liners. And so down here in our finishing guide, we're going to see night interruption required, long date obligates. Uh, again, all of our general culture requirements for Echinacea is included in here. And so finishing these for springtime, we want to again go with Mother's Day, transplant week seven. And so it also shows on there, long day night interruption lighting required. And so when we transplant our echinacea week seven, we're going to put long day lighting on those. And you, you can go to our website as well. It's going to give you detailed scheduling information for sombreros. 
generally it only takes about five to six weeks of that night interruption lighting to initiate flowering. Once it's initiated, we can discontinue the lighting and it will continue to come to flower. So transplant week seven, and again, echinacea are my favorite for the fall. Um, not to knock mums at all. I love mums. It's a blast of color, but you know, they're there and they're gone. And an echinacea, in my opinion, is going to add so much more value to the customers because it's going to keep going well after frost. You're going to get an extended bloom time for fall with your sombreros. And so again, week 36, transplant week 26. We're finishing faster in the summertime. That just kind of makes sense. We have natural photo period of long days, and we have those natural warm temperatures. So like I said, based in West, uh, West Grove, Pennsylvania, it's going to be nice and hot in summertime. That's going to relate to virtually all regions of the country. So this is very accurate based upon the trials and uh, scheduling information that is coming out of West Grove. And again, we'll save this. Return to my crop list. And well, let's, let's pick one more. Let's see. What is another really popular one. Oh, lavenders, of course. So our new one, lavender primavera, our Spanish lavender, flowers summer long, continuous flowering, does not require cold treatment. We can see here we have three parameters because these can be scheduled for, say, Valentine's Day. That's exciting, having a blooming Spanish lavender for Valentine's Day, but we're still going to go with our Mother's Day. So spring, Early summer, transplant week seven, our summer, we can do these for fall because these bloom and perform in the summer heat, which is unusual for Spanish. And then let's hit Valentine's Day. I think that is perfect. So what's that about week six? Transplant week 44. Uh, and what's that about eight, 14 weeks. And so you can see over the winter time, lower light levels, we're going to have a little bit longer finish time. That summertime program, nine weeks, uh, we're getting these into, into flower. And again, all of our culture requirements on here. With the primaveras, I do recommend several pinches. You know, two pinches is ideal. We can do a third as well. And again, save to my schedule. And return to my crop list. And here, we've got my crop schedule. And we can continue. If we want to build an entire program of perennial scheduling, we can pick our primary classes like the lavender, like salvia, monardas, phlox. We can build all these into a program and then I'm going to view my schedule. And there is my scheduling. Now that doesn't look real easy to read. It's kind of cool looking. I like how it's uh, very visual there, but what we've added now is we can download this into a spreadsheet. And this is gonna make it very easy now for you to take this and give it to production and visualize what are my stick weeks, what are my transplant weeks, and uh, when am I going to finish? We've got the same finish weeks. So we can see the different transplant weeks. This really makes it easy for scheduling and then you know, see, we have sombreros and primaveras, transplant week seven, but coreopsis uptick week eight. We may have other crops that are going to say week four. By looking at this, then that could be kind of messy, bringing in liners all those different weeks. We can kind of extrapolate a little bit and we can streamline and really pick a single date to have our liners come in. And that way we can hit all of those finish dates. We can hold the liners a little bit longer if we need to, if the scheduling uh, requires that we hold them or we can bring them in here earlier if we need to to get them to finish on time but again this is easily printable now to be able to uh, hand to production guys and get these perennials easily scheduled in your program whether you're an existing perennial grower or a brand new grower fantastic tool here i hope you'll visit uh, firstyourflowertool.com and give this a try it is really this easy. One more thing, I just kind of give you a little tease here. I have been asked, can we get the key seed items put in this format as well? 
Now, also from seed, our focus is on first year flowering. That is a lot of where a lot of the breeding is heading. And so we are currently working on getting the seed items into this type of format. And we will have that launched a little bit later this year. So that is it. Bill, what do you think? I mean, do you think you can grow or schedule a crop of perennials now using this? I'm glad you differentiated that because yes, I do think that I could schedule a crop of perennials. <laughs> Growing it, probably a different story. I need to yeah. call you for a little bit more advice, but uh, I, I think it's fantastic. I think you're, you're taking a lot of the guesswork out. You and uh, the Darwin and Keith teams, I know you've spent a lot of time working on this and working with uh, you know, IT department to, to put this together and make it user friendly. And I think what you've created is uh, is very much groundbreaking. So Chris, thank you so much. And to the viewers, you can see why this is an is an invaluable tool. I mean, we looked at it. There, there's more than 150 varieties that that you can schedule. Um, you know, this is something that you and your entire team are really going to uh, to benefit from. Definitely look for a link to the tool and the Darwin website with the culture in the video description, as well as links to that video mini series that I referenced at the beginning. If you found value in this video, click the like button. Also be sure to subscribe to this channel and you'll never miss another Tech On Demand video. So Chris, thank you very much. I know you got to go out and visit some perennial growers, so safe travels. Absolutely. And, uh, keep, keep doing the good work. All right, thank you, Bill. Thank you all for watching. I'm Bill Calkins with Tech On Demand, and on behalf of Chris and the Darwin and Keith teams, have a fantastic season and take care.